Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how to uh, do this eye look that I've got going on right now. Um, the eyeshadow is all from uh, an NYX palette that I will show you later in the uh, tutorial. Um, my name is Arnora Durin's daughter uh, in the SCA, Reina in non-SCA world. Um, I am just starting makeup tutorials. I just started my uh, my transition from male to female, so I just learned makeup. But uh, a lot of my friends have been requesting me to do tutorials or, you know, teach them, give them lessons on how I do my makeup. Um, the main one that's requested is my eye makeup. Um, as you can see, I usually go pretty bold on that. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I guess we will get started on this. The main request I've been receiving is about eyes, so I'm just going to do eyes this time, see how well it's received, and we'll see if we keep going on this. Um, do you do that? I start with concealers. Um, I have two. So I have a beard line, right? Because I'm trans. Uh, so I have a concealer with an orange. This is uh, Rimmel, Wake Me Up. And then I just have another concealer for like dark spots because I sleep terribly. Um, this is Master Conceal by Face Studio Camouflage Concealer. It does an okay job. Um, I've found for me concealer uh, first and then the rest of it seems to work the best. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and see how well that can conceal. Uh, I'm not gonna be using the wake me up because I'm not doing the bottom of my face in this one. Um, we're just gonna be doing the eyes. So we're starting there. And I just do a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Hi, Eric. God, don't. That looks horrible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's probably a little too much. It's fine. Um, there's a variety of different ways you can blend. Um, I started out using like an egg-shaped blending sponge, but honestly, I've found that this tapered brush, it's super fluffy. It works really well to just sort of get it all over my, uh, pores and everything seem to be big enough that the brush strokes don't actually show when I use a brush. Your mileage may vary. Um, and that's going to be, you know, the same for all of this. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Um, I have sort of rainbow skin, right? So I've got blue tones, I've got red tones on my face. Um, and then I've got the, like, gray blue tones because of the beard line. Yeah, see? That works pretty well. Um, so, the next thing that I would do after that, um, given that we're doing eyes, is a primer. Um, this I actually got from Etsy. No, not Etsy. Ipsy. Um, it's Luminizer Primer uh, by Dr. Brandt. Seems to work pretty well. Uh, makes the stuff stick to my face. <clears throat> and I just sort of dab that on there and there. A little uneven. Uh, I've been told you never want to like rub your eye because it causes lines and stuff. But, you know, I am 32 and didn't start moisturizing until 32. Sorry, I just turned 33 actually. So I have a crap ton of lines. Uh, whatever, I'm not super worried about it. It just makes it a pain in the butt to do eyeliner sometimes. Okay, so primers on. Uh, typically before all of this, I would have also done foundation. Um, so, on the rest of my face. Uh, my favorite foundation so far is a BB cream. Uh, I have two actually. I use the NYX BB cream 
I love NYX. They're a great brand. I also use the Physician's Formula BB Cream. They both work with my skin really well. Um, and then I was just introduced to the Studio Fix by MAC. Um, it's super light. It covers even my horribly red faces, which my lighting is garbage, so I apologize. Um, so I'll usually do the, the BB Cream and then the MAC. Um, and then everything that you just saw on the ice. But we're skipping those steps for now. Uh, so now that we're all primed, it's time to get to the shadows. Uh, I do a lot of bold colors. I like bold colors. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to do this palette. Um, given that my hair is doing this red, pink, orange thing, I think that's a good, uh, good place to start, don't you? Not that you can talk back, because this is a recording. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to poke around on this palette. Um, see what I can come up with. Um, for any Skadians watching this, one of the things that I tell people when they're like, Oh my god, you haven't been doing makeup very long. How are you so good at it? First off, I don't think I'm that good at it. Second off, uh, I have been painting and drawing and coloring most of my life. Um, so knowing complementary colors and stuff like that helps. Um, secondly, uh, if you've ever painted a charter, it's fine, fine detail work. goes on your face. Works really well like that. So, uh, choosing your brushes. Right? Uh, I typically do something like this, just a small tapered brush um, for applying my base coat. Uh, I find the, the color that I want to be like mostly prominent. In this case, I think we will go with this sort of red here. It looks pink in the camera, kind of orangey, uh, but it's mostly red. Um, I just got this palette, so I'm not super familiar with how everything works on it, so we're going to find out together. Um, so this is a matte color. I usually like to start with a matte and just sort of dot, 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 pat it on here, and I'm going to go... Just, just to above the crease, I think is what that's called. Again, I'm super new at this, so I might have some of the terminology wrong. Uh, for instance, I don't even know if this is actually called a taper brush. It might be called something else, but it's got a taper on it, and it's a brush. Yeah, there we go. That doesn't suck. Um, this is not as pigmented as I was hoping, but... It's fine. We'll make it work. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of patience, just like, just like painting or any other artwork, because at the end of the day, it's art on your face. Um, see, it's about the same color as my hair. That worked out well. Going to do the other side. I'm going to use my mirror here. Um, if you're like me, you're probably sort of OCD. I shouldn't use that term because I'm not actually OCD. Uh, particular, we'll use that. Kind of particular about making sure you get both eyes the same, which I didn't. Um, which is one of the reasons it usually takes me a bit to do my makeup and one of the reasons that my husband gets frustrated with me is because it takes me a bit to do my makeup because I'll do one side just the way I like it and then the other side doesn't match so I have to make the match because um, I can do one thing pretty well doing a second thing to match never easy okay so there we go um, once again, my lighting's garbage. I'll, uh, post some better pictures, but that's the base coat. Um, 
the brushes I'm using, if anybody cares, are Forever Brushes by e.l.f. Um, I literally just got them because they're shiny and rainbowy, but they work pretty well so far. Um, the face brush I was using, I don't remember the brand. I'll post it later. Um, so now we're going to do a little bit detail color here. Um, let's see. We'll do some... We'll do some of the uh, sort of fluorescent pink here. That one. Just to give some pop of color up towards the brow. Yeah. Uh, sort of matching the hair here. Um, and then after this, we'll layer some... I have a, a gold over here that we'll put in there uh, to go with the sort of blonde that's showing through from my dye job here. Uh, this is way easier if you can be ambidextrous. I'm not, but I'm learning. Okay. Yeah, that's... Doesn't suck. Uh, looks better in real life. I should get a better camera if I'm going to keep doing this. Obviously. <clears throat> uh, so I just sort of brush off my brush until... It doesn't come off on my hand anymore. And then uh, this is the, the bright gold that I'm using here. Let's get that on there. And I'm gonna do the lid uh, just sort of up to the crease. Um, or a hood, I guess, since I have hooded eyes apparently. I didn't even know that was a term. Research makes you smarter, though, so, you know. Oh. You don't usually go for the glittery stuff, because we all know that glitter is nature's uh, craft herpes. But NYX is biodegradable, so I feel a little bit better about that, and it's only going to show up for the next six months instead of six millennia there so got that going um i also have some morph um eyeshadows that i will touch with here in a bit uh to sort of give that red a little bit more of a of a pop because it's kind of getting muted by the by the pink and the gold here um and the morph red that I have is kind of metallic and shiny. And, you know, Firefly taught me anything. Shiny is good. Right? Yeah? Okay. Cool. There we go. Uh, once again, make sure it doesn't come off on the hand. Um, and then I'm gonna grab that morph. I'm gonna grab that morph because I didn't bring it. It's fine. <laughs> There's a shiny red in here. We'll see how that works. So that's kind of shiny and red. Give that one a whirl. This is a little bit more shadow than I usually do. I usually try to keep it to three palettes. Um, but, or, um, not palettes, three, whatever these things are called. Yeah, that's better. Gives it a bit of a, bit of a sheen to the rest of the lid. Cool. 
Okay, now that that's done, we're going to take this brush. So it's just your sort of angled eyeliner brush, right? And we're going to do some black on here. Oh, and I found the red, actually. Uh, the black, I believe, is just a matte uh, morph. So we're going to do this nice sort of eye shadow uh, liner on the top lid here. And this also has my morph red in it, so we'll go ahead and touch that up to the way I was going to a little bit ago. Um, I really like the smoky eye looks. Um, it's one of my favorite. I'm not sure why. Probably because it appeals to the gothy part of me. Um, yeah, I screwed that up. This is why it pays to be ambidextrous. Here. Nope, that's garbage. Okay, it's nothing you can't fix with smudging. All right. And we're going to put a liquid liner over it, too. Uh, so, it's not super imperative. Um, here is the red. It is hyper, hyper, hyper pigmented. Um, it is my favorite red ever, and I'm probably going to run out before the end of the year. I use it so much. Um, so we're just going to dot that in. Like so. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Might even show up on camera better. So you just get that sort of windshield washer thing going. Yeah, that's better. You can see. The right eye looks way better. We'll just look at the right eye. Um, and then, now that those are done, I'm going to uh, grab the slightly bigger tapered eyeshadow brush, and I'm just going to blend, um, you know, make everything sort of a gradient and less like uh, Mimi from the Drew Carey Show, if... Anybody who sees this is old enough to know what that is. I'm not age shaming you, I'm just age shaming myself here. Uh, as well as my poor choice of sitcoms when I was younger. So, here is that. Just, just sort of even everything out and it fix up, fixes those messed up wings, wings a bit too. Um, this is also where I like to bring it down and sort of get the under lid or lower lid, the bottom set of lashes, whatever. So that sort of carries that gold and black down. And we're going to line both of those two, or uh, we're going to line both the top and the lower. Um, there, that looks better. Um, <clears throat> for liner, I just got this, uh, I'm not sure how I like it yet, uh, I have been using the NYX, um, a vinyl liner, and that works really well, I adore it, it comes with a paintbrush, so I know how to use it, uh, this is the Kat Von D tattoo liner, uh, this is the, the waterproof version and it is it lives up to its name uh so when you put this one on you expect to not take it off um works good so it's got a nice sort of flexible just gonna so it's not it's not rigid at all it doesn't drag like a lot of liners i've noticed do at least on my super saggy skin so we're gonna 
I haven't mastered being able to do like the full cat's eye yet, so I'm not going to try it on camera. But I'm getting okay at wings without using the cheater stamp. So we're just going to flick. Yeah, that doesn't suck. And then do a second line. Um, I am horribly paranoid about injuring my eyes. Uh, so I reflexively blink anytime anything touches them. Uh, so if you're like me, take blink breaks is my recommendation. Otherwise you end up doing what I just did, which is totally messing up your eyeliner. Which I realize my hand is totally in the way of the camera, so you can't see how foobar this is. Um, and you know what? Like Miss Lester says, it's always okay to fail. Um, yeah, see, that's... There's just that little line, but when my eyes are open, you can't really notice. So I can probably... Yeah. I can make it work. It's fine. Uh, we're gonna do the second eye. Which, I guess... See if I can do that here. See? Blink breaks. Because if I think, hey, I just have to do a centimeter at a time, and then I can blink, I am less likely to blink while I'm dragging a paintbrush across my eyelid and then for the wing it's just come down and flick up I think I got that pretty close actually um, and then you do a second line all the way across the lid for however thick you want to make your eyeliner it doesn't have to be super thick it can be uh, you know, all the way up to the crease if you want to be super dramatic about it, which can be fun. Uh, dramatic makeup is the best kind of drama. Um, it's the only kind I like anyway. So just finish out the wing, fill in the lines. Smooth everything out. And futz with it until you ruin it. Make this one match here. There. They're not horribly off. <laughs> So now I'm going to do the bane of my existence, which is the lower lash and waterline. It's going to suck. I always screw this up. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I tell a lot of fighters. Don't get hit there. I.e. don't jab yourself in the eye with your eyeliner. not wanting to take this liquid liner, which I shouldn't be surprised. So I might bust out the NYX. Or I might just deal with it. That actually doesn't look too terrible. You can tell there's some on there. So we'll leave it. Apologize for the runny nose. It's not, uh, it's not the Rona. I just have apparently after 30 plus years in, yep, jabbed myself in the eye. 30 plus years in Oregon have finally started developing allergies. And it's, it's some BS, y'all. Okay. I 
And then once you get your water line, then is the giant pain in the butt part. And that's doing the actual lash line where every time you hit a lash, your eye wants to blink. And then you just connect that up to the wing. I'm gonna do that here too. Let's see. Okay. Yep. So cool. That wiped off. Alright, that is eyes. Um at least those eyes, uh, except mascara. So mascara, the favorite one that I have right now, uh, it's right here. This is a sample that I got from a friend. It's a uh, bad gal bang. It's amazing. Uh, it doesn't clump. It just, it works. It's fantastic. Um, I don't know if I have any left. We're going to give it a whirl. If it doesn't, then we're going to try another one. Or we can just use both because we're an adult. And I'm using the Royal Wii a lot, but I haven't won Coronet, so meh. Um, I like to get it up under the, the lash and rotate it. Um, that seems to really deposit more mascara on the on the lash itself I think we're gonna end up doing both because this bang is really nice but that surfer one that I got from Ipsy surfer curl uh, it's by Tarte it's really good as well um, and it just sort of volumizes a bit better this this is just sort of a lash color um, I, I got really lucky for being assigned male at birth I actually have pretty okay lashes so I can get away with not doing falsies I mean anybody can get away without doing falsies because Western beauty standards are crap and do what you know what works for you um, I happen to adore large lashes uh, especially on myself so that's why I like them uh, so far, my favorite for fake lashes is the iLure London Magnetic ones. They work super well with just three layers of the liner, um, as long as you let it like dry each time. We're not going to do those tonight, though, because we're doing this. Yeah. Um, I also like these tapered brushes. They work really well. That's focus nope it's not gonna focus so you can sort of see that way um, it it prevents me jabbing myself in the eye quite often um, rather than like I think my first mascara was a Maybelline uh, like power rocket or some crap like that it sounds like a sex toy honestly uh, it's it's good mascara, but the brush is this like oblong thing that just does not work very well. Okay. So that's my lashes with the bang. Right? They're already gigantic now. Um, and this isn't a lengthening mascara either. Um, so now we're going to use Tarte's Surfer Curl. Um, this is a, a volumizing lengthening mascara. Um, you can see the brush is a lot more coarse than the bang was. Um, but I still do the same technique. I'm just going to do the top lashes on this one. Just sort of roll it through here. And that also, I have found, helps prevent the clunk, uh, clumping that a lot of mascaras are prone to. And yes, even the no clump mascaras are prone to clumping. At least from what I've found. Um, 
I mean that and the the age of your mascara. If it's past its due date, it's gonna suck. As well as probably make your eye burn, if we're being honest. Um, okay, there. That is a completed eye look that I would wear out. Um, I'm actually glad I recorded this so I can watch it and do it again because I'm kind of a fan. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me a message. Uh, I like talking to people as much of an introvert as I am. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like this, share it around. All right, so that's it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, it's it's not really any different than painting, um, at least in my opinion. Um, but it's definitely something that takes practice. So if you're not happy with your your makeup skills, you know, like any other skill, it's practice, practice, practice. Um, so I hope this helps at least one person, um, you know, want to keep doing their, their skills, um, and, or keep doing their makeup, rather, and perfecting their skills. Um, makeup for me has been a heck of a lot of fun. Um, I love seeing other people's makeups and different varieties on things, um, so it's it's always a blast to see what people come up with um and it's always a blast to see what i can come up with um it's a it's a huge creative outlet for me so uh, with that i will call it the end this is super awkward i've never done one of these before but uh from what I've seen from most YouTube videos, people end with some sort of thing. Uh, so I'm just gonna say, uh, you know, keep, keep being you, and uh, don't be a dick to people. Yeah, that seems good. <laughs>